is Amber Baylor, and I want to thank you for taking the time to learn more about health insurance and specifically managed care in this presentation, Introduction to Health Insurance. In this module, you will learn the participants in managed care and where you fit in as a medical biller. You will also learn the different types of private and public insurance options and how these types of insurance affect billing and reimbursement. So let's get started. Specifically, you will learn the evolution of health insurance, the P's of managed care, an introduction to private health care, and an introduction to government health care. So let's first begin by discussing what exactly is health insurance. Health insurance is a contract between a health plan participant or policyholder and a third party payer or insurance company. The third party payer can be either a public entity, the federal government, or a private entity, a company sponsored health insurance plan. Now that we understand what exactly health insurance is, let's talk about the evolution of health insurance. First, health insurance has its roots in accident insurance. From there, it moved to a fee-for-service only model to the current state of health insurance that we have today, which is managed health care. Managed health care is actually a combination of fee-for-service and accident insurance and will become more clear in further slides. So accident insurance. Accident insurance was introduced in 1694 by Hugh the Elder Chamberlain. Like modern disability insurance, it, it also pays for accidents. Healthcare insurance did not exist at this time. The next um, evolution of health insurance was the fee-for-service models. All healthcare costs were out of pocket. Each individual treatment was required payment. This became extraordinarily expensive for complicated care because the costs were, were essentially endless. This fee-for-service model, model was only available to the ultra-rich. Then we moved into the early 20th century with the managed care health model. Services were performed on a prepaid basis and covers routine, preventative, and emergency services. So what exactly is managed health care? It is a pooling of patients in a pay-for-use system that made health insurance more affordable to the general public. Managed health care places certain limits on health care delivery. And managed health care evolved from the disability insurance and fever service systems. Managed care encompasses, encompasses a large variety of um, of products or components that make it uh, a managed care organization. First, there's preventative care. Preventative care offers the ability to lower long-term costs by heading off any extraordinary health insurance, health problems by preventing them before they happen. Health Managed health care is also uh, has a component called provider networks. This is a, uh, you've probably heard of the in or um, are you in or are you out of my service area for providers or your physicians. If the provider is not in network, then the managed care organization will not pay for their services rendered to you. Managed care also has quality improvement guidelines. These quality improvement guidelines help the bottom line of the business and help to provide better care for the participants or persons involved in the managed care system. Managed care also is concerned with defined standards. This allows for a better evaluation of what works and what does not work in the medical care, healthcare delivery cycle. So let's talk a little bit about healthcare delivery. There's four main participants, the patient, the physician or provider, there's payment, and the payer. You might be wondering what exactly defines each one of these P's and where do medical billers come into play? So let's talk about that. The P's of health insurance. As discussed earlier, the payment, patient or policyholder, a provider or physician, and a payer. 
These are important to keep in mind because they were these terms will be used interchangeably throughout the rest of this presentation and your career as a medical biller. You will need to know that a patient is the same as a policyholder and a provider is the same as a physician. And a payer is who actually pays for uh, the uh, services rendered. Let's go into those in a little bit more detail. The patient is someone who is injured or ill and is seeking medical attention to fix a problem. A patient who has a health insurance is also termed a policyholder or subscriber. This patient belongs to a network of health insurance or managed care uh, business, and this is termed a payer. This is a group that pays for the medical service incurred by a patient or policyholder. This can be a private insurance company or a publicly funded healthcare program, for example, Medicare. The provider or physician is the person or entity that supplies medically necessary care. And then finally, the payment. The payment is the transaction cost in healthcare delivery. So now let's talk about the medical billers' relationship among the parties involved in healthcare. First, a patient or policyholder will go to an in-network physician or provider to have any health-related um, issues resolved. Then, the physician or provider submits their claims through the medical biller to a payer or insurance company. The physician has uh, various contracts with a variety of payers or insurance companies that they will seek a certain amount of patients or a certain number of procedures, and those are outlined in their contract obligations. Medical billers interact by providing the uh, insurance claim forms to the payers and then also acts as an intermediary between the payer and the physician and the physician and the patient or policyholder and making sure that all parties are paid in the process. Now that we've talked about uh, the P's of uh, healthcare delivery, let's talk about health coverage categories so we can understand the different um, uh, participants in the healthcare industry. This graph it shows the percentage of Americans in various forms of healthcare coverage categories. In the largest category, private coverage or managed care re results in almost 70% of Americans covered under this type of system. Private coverage would be obtained either through a health insurance company directly or is provided by a, a health, uh, an employee supported, employer supported healthcare um, insurance plan. Next, the largest percentage or the percentage of Americans who are uninsured are approximately 16.6%. Next, Medicare or Medicaid uh, results in 16% of all Americans, while 2.7% represent TRICARE, CHAMPUS, CHAMP VA, or VA uh, a sponsored government health plan. Now that we understand how the insurance breaks down along the uh, per, as a percentage of Americans, let's talk about health private health care organizations specifically and the various models that are employed to um, provide health insurance to a broad range of Americans. In this slide, you can see private health care organization categories, from PPO to HMO, which most of you are familiar with, to EPOs, POSs, PSN, slash PSOs. We will talk in more detail about each one of these categories so you can understand who you will be billing to and how their organizations actually work. HMO defined. A group of providers often uh, offer care through the HMO for a flat monthly rate with no deductibles. Only visits to professionals within the HMO network are covered by the policy. All visits, prescriptions, and other care must be cleared by the HMO in order to be covered. A primary care physician within the HMO acts as the gatekeeper to more specialized care. In other words, a person who was, who was seeking a specialist opinion uh, about any variety of uh, medically necessary 
um, health advice would go to their primary physician first in the HMO in order for the HMO physician to um, refer that patient to a specialist. If a payer or if a person in this or a patient in this type of network does not go to their primary care physician first for specialized care, then most likely the HMO will not pay for the uh, procedures performed or consultations given by the specialist. Managed care or, uh, organizations gained mainstream attention in America with the passage of the Health Maintenance Organization Act of 1970. It is important to know that managed care organizations are licensed by each state or by insurance com company licensing board. State consumer protection agencies oversee the quality of care delivered and publish this data for the public. For example, if you Google HMO California, you can find HMOs in California as well as ratings data. Please go to the URL listed at HTTP colon forward slash forward slash www.opa.ca.gov forward slash report undershared card to learn more about healthcare rankings in various HMOs. HMOs in California are include but are not limited to Cigna, Blue of California, Anthem, and Pacific Care. Now let's talk about the PPO. The PPO is a group of providers that charge a fee to insurance companies for access to their group. For the patient, there is no gatekeeper per se, as in the HMO model, but the patient will have to pay a fee to utilize providers outside the PPO. There is usually a minimum deductible that a patient must meet when a non-PPO non provider is utilized. Most large insurance companies, for example, Blue Cross, also have a PPO network as well as an HMO network to give consumers a greater choice in what works best in their health care decisions. Now let's talk a little bit about the EPO. This is a little bit more uh, or less mainstream than the PPO or the HMO. This is an exclusive contract between a provider and a payer. Members receive benefits for seeking out medical care by providers in the network. In this managed care organization, providers do not participate in, in other managed care organizations. The EPO cannot operate under the, a PPO or HMO structure. Now let's talk about another less well-known type of insurance, the POS. This MC managed care organization is a flexible mo model whereby patients can choose to use HMO providers or self-refer to non-HMO providers. There's no deductibles or coinsurance payments if the patient utilizes care within the network. If, however, the patient seeks medical care without a referral by an HMO primary doctor, there's a large deductible and a 20 to 25 percent coinsurance charge. The last uh, more uh, or less mainstream uh, product that we're going to talk about is the PSN or PSO. It is a network developed and operated by, pro by providers. The founding providers contract directly with employers and government purchasers while avoiding the influence of an insurance intermediary. The patient utilized in, in network providers to avoid higher costs associated with providers outside the group. Let's recap. This table is from a managed care organization and products. Um, is from, excuse me, the Gastroenterology Clinics of North America. This table lists the various uh, products from the HMO to the PSN slash PSO. It defines the method of provider compensation, uh, acknowledges if there's a gatekeeper function, if there's any risk sharing, if there's open access, if you can provide out-of-network benefits, and delineate state regulatory requirements. If you look under the usual method of provider compensation, you will see a, um, either capitation, discounted fee for service, or a variable compensation for providers. Capita capitation is provider 
accepts pre-established payments for enrollees over a period of time. This usually consists of approximately one year contract. After the one year, the provi provider will have to renegotiate with the insurance company. The discounted fee for service is exactly what it what um, you would think it would mean. It's a discounted fee for a larger number of uh, provider or a larger number of participants in the network. And the PSN or PSO has a variable structure depending on what is negotiated between the provider and the payer. So now that we've uh, talked about the basics of health insurance provided by private insurance companies, let's talk a little bit about government-sponsored health insurance categories and generally targeted individual groups. First, let's talk about Medicare. Medicare is offered to individuals who are 65 years or older, while Medicaid is the uh, government-sponsored health care program for families with very low income. Then we have TRICARE, CHAMPAS, CHAMPA, or VA. These are milita military benefits that uh, providers can, um, that uh, individuals can access if they or a family member has been in the military. So let's talk a little bit more in depth about Medicare. It is the largest medical benefits program in the U.S. Medicare provides medical care for citizens 65 years or older who have worked at least 10 years in the Medicare system. It is administered by the Center Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. There are four main programs in Medicare, which will be discussed in more detail in another module. Now let's talk about Medicaid. It is a U.S.-sponsored health program program for low-income families. The program also covers health care for people with disabilities. The coverage spec spectrum is complex and differs from state to state. We will explore Medicaid more fully in another module. Each state has the ability to um, also change their uh, Medicaid program uh, specifically for residents in their state. Finishing with TRICARE, the, the third main um, government-sponsored uh, health care program is TRICARE. This is formerly known as the Civilian Health and Medical Programs of the Uniformed Services, or CHAMPAS. It is a health care program of the United States Department of Defense Military Health System. TRICARE provides civilian health benefits for military personnel, military retirees, and their dependents, including some members of the reserve component. The TRICARE program is managed by TRICARE Management Activity under the authority of the Assistant Secretary of Defense. TRICARE is a civilian care component of the military health system, although historically it has also included health care delivered in the military medical treatment facilities. CHAMPA. CHAMPA is the Civilian Health and Medical Program of the Department of Veteran, Vet, Veterans Affairs. It is a comprehensive health care program in which the VA shares the cost of covered health services and supplies with eligible beneficiaries. The VA. The VA provides a medical benefits package to all enrolled veterans. This comprehensive plan provides a full range of preventative outpatient and inpatient services within VA sponsored healthcare systems. So now that we've talked about the basics of managed care, how it evolved, what exactly defines managed care, the components of private health insurance and government health insurance, you can understand how medical billers play an important role in the delivery of healthcare to the patient. If medical billers did not exist, then there would be no intermediary between all the different components of the healthcare delivery system. Thank you very much for your time, uh, and I wish you the best in your medical billing profession. 